Welcome back. Now it's time for our weekly energy update with Dan McTeague, Senior Petroleum Analyst at GasWizard.ca. Take it away, Dan. Well, thank you very much for that, Nima. And I may have misplaced my glasses here, so a little hard to look at uh, at uh, the, the screen here, but not hard to uh, notice that gas prices across Canada, energy prices have shot up dramatically. In the past week and a half or so, we've seen about a net increase of a 13, 14 cents a litre. And uh, I think that's caught a lot of people off guard, but anybody who's been watching us here, uh, uh, News Forum will know that this was very much predictable and predicted uh, that we would see a bump in prices on average of about 10 cents a litre throughout the month of January, and that it would stabilize a little bit in February. Looks like we're, uh, we're, we're spot on. So that means that Vancouver will you know, continue to test $1.80 for a litre of gasoline, the rest of BC in the $1.60 range. Again, the difference there being taxation. Uh, Alberta will continue to boast the lowest prices in the country, thanks to its premier getting rid of all provincial taxes uh, at about the $1.30 range. Uh, neighboring Saskatchewan, $1.45 to $1.47, while uh, Manitoba is still struggling at about $1.47 to $1.55 in Winnipeg. Uh, Ontario, we're looking at uh, prices that have moved up uh, rather dramatically. Uh, to a dollar fifty six, but it's now come down to about a dollar fifty. That's probably where we're going to stay for the next couple of weeks, up and down a few pennies here. While Quebec is always about sixteen cents a liter higher, pushing in the one sixty five range and uh, pretty much there. At Maritimes, uh, although prices are relatively stable in the dollar seventies, uh, you know what has not uh, gone unnoticed is what we saw. Uh, Friday morning when the uh, various utility boards, because they regulate prices there, goodness knows why it's irrelevant and uh, predictions take place all the time across North America. But I guess they, they still need that, uh, that comfort of knowing that uh, bureaucrats will do a better job than the markets. They'll still pay the same. And this morning, did they ever get a wallop? They saw a 40 cent increase in the price of heating oil and diesel. Now diesel we can understand because it's going up everywhere. We've cut back supplies of diesel. We've put our all our eggs in one basket. We've gone down this road of uh, you know, thinking that renewables can be displacing diesel, but the reality is that the world wants more of it as well as oil. But in the case of the Maritimes, of course, uh, we, uh, we have to note that they, many of them, especially in Newfoundland, have no alternatives like natural gas. So heating oil, stove oil, furnace oil are extremely important. And that increase comes at a very, very tough time for all of them. Uh, it won't be uh, obviously pleasant to remind boosters of green energy and uh, those who believe that the climate is everything uh, and don't have any problems with Canada saying no to Japan and, uh, and Germany when it comes to uh, you know, uh, our ability to get natural gas to market that, in fact, we're going to be seeing an increase uh, in carbon taxes, not only on April 1st for the most of the country, July 1st, another one for places like Newfoundland that will bring prices up to potentially the highest uh, paying prices for gasoline in North America and for diesel products. Uh, of course, all of this comes on a backdrop where the government continues its policy on an idea that came out of the 2015 uh, Paris Conference on Climate, that is to say, just transition. So in other words, take 2.7 million jobs in Canada and convert them all into janitorial jobs or maybe coding or something like that, according to the cabinet uh, briefings that was unlocked uh, by, uh, by Blacklock's reporter, Mining Ottawa. Very interesting, you have a government that says that uh, it can simply wish away fossil fuels, uh, that it can somehow blame Canada for the so-called emissions problems with respects to carbon. Carbon is not a pollutant, as I've stressed before. It is in fact a gas, it is a molecule, it is not a pollutant, it is not a substance. And so for that reason, those who are pursuing this are doing so at the expense of the Canadian economy. And so it's not just fuel that people should be concerned about, it's the ever increasing price of uh, our, uh, our food, uh, which of course is taxed again and again through that carbon tax, compounded, cascaded, if you will. Uh, and that's driving up the price of everything. This morning, revelation, Bank of Canada is now agreeing. Carbon taxes are in fact inflationary. And if you add that with the, with the parliamentary budget officer of this country has said last year, it will be a net loss in the thousands of dollars for most Canadians as we head towards its final move in 2030. I don't know how Canadians can continue to put up with this charade. Whatever the case may be, if they're not happy with the effect of the first carbon tax, the second carbon tax kicks in on, on July the 1st. I would expect that between now and the next five to six years, a net increase of diesel and gasoline of 30 cents a litre. It's going to be impossible to live in this country. But that's it for this week. Uh, look for prices to remain stable. Next week, 
will probably be in the same position, a few cents up and a few cents down, but nothing really to write home about except for dangerous, very costly federal government green policies. That's it, Nima. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks for that, Dan. Again, that was Dan McTeague, Senior Petroleum Analyst at GasWizard.ca. All right. Stay with us. Forum Daily's weekly crypto and digital asset update with Bobby Del Rio is up next, so stay tuned.